Steve, I mean, you were two games there where it's, I guess you're seeing, it's consistency again. How we, we lose to Lord's on Saturday, three days later we go and beat comfortably the top of the table game. Yeah, consistency in results is, um, is definitely what we're striving for. I mean, within the result, without trying to gloss over the loss to Lordswood, which is really disappointing. But within, within the result, you've got the performance. And I do think I can see evidence that some of the stuff we're working on, particularly without the ball, is starting to transpire onto the pitch. You know, I think we look harder to break down. Even the Lordswood game, granted we've lost 1-0, which is not acceptable, but their goal was a corner. I think other than that, we limited them. I think Nathan probably had to make one save that I recall. And obviously keep a clean sheet against Glebe was always going to be a bit more of a test. But again, hope, hopefully it proves we're moving in the right direction because yeah. how many times earlier in the season will we say we've let in silly goals? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, I think the Glebe thing, what was frustrating, it was flat and it was like, there wasn't anybody who had a bad bad game, but nobody had a, a good game either. It just was That's not the, clicking. L- Lords were Lords were, sorry, yeah. yeah. It just was not clicking. Yeah, it was difficult. It was a difficult day for us. I think we've got to give Lords with a bit of credit. They've got the best defensive record in the league. Fair play to them for that. They're obviously quite hard to break down. Kept clean sheets against Fisher. Kept clean sheets against Lid. So don't underestimate them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we 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 did make a bit of a meal of it. I don't think, other than the disallowed goal, which nobody has still clearly explained what it was disallowed for. I think a foul on the goalkeeper is what's been speculated. Um, but yeah, other than that. I think Trev had one very difficult half chance. We, we didn't create a lot, and that's unusual. It's not often we don't yeah. create much. Because that's the thing, if, if, if you put the game away and to the side that goal, that whole game, there was no real threat from them, but we didn't turn it around ourselves, you know? Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that completely. I think um, I felt, to give them some credit, there was a spell in the first half when... They were getting at us down the wings, yeah. particularly down our left. Were causing us some problems, but we were defending quite resolutely. Um, Half time probably came at a good time for us, but yeah, we you, you normally expect to have a spell in a game where you've got the opposition on on the ropes, and it didn't really happen. It was it was a bad day. I can't, I can't you know, I wish I could give you a clear explanation. It was ten of the eleven that were started against Stansfield. The previous game, Walder was the only change. Uh, Zach, Zach came in for Walder. I think, I think that was the only change, so... No real it's just, it's, it's just it's, it's that magic word. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, at least you can see you were doing things. Like, you were making subs in that second half to try and change things around. But it just... No matter what, it seemed, no matter what you're doing, it just wouldn't happen <clears throat> for whatever reason. Yeah, unfortunately, just due, due to circumstances, we didn't have a massive amount of attacking options on the bench. Um, I'm just making sure I didn't do any injustice there. I had Moalaka, who's just coming back from injury. Yeah. Um, Alpha, unfortunately, wasn't available that day. He was injured. So I think I had Wolds, who, who you know, we, we kind of had an agreement. We'd only use him sparingly because still trying to get him back to full fitness. I had Tommy, again, at centre half. Um, I'll put myself on the spot now. Obviously, I had Zach who we did bring on. I had Dan. No, I didn't have Dan T. He started, didn't he? Anyway, I didn't have a lot of attacking yeah. option on the bench, so that's the, that's the trouble when you're chasing a game, isn't it? Yeah, because, I mean, and then you go the other way around, because then you move on to say that the, the league game, and that was a completely different side of the team. We had all that attack, that Regan going at them down the wings. They had the possession, but it didn't matter. We managed managed them out. So again, they didn't really threaten or anything, but we were just completely different. Yeah, I mean, being a cup game, I think I think Glebe, they definitely rotated their squad a little bit. I think three of their main starters were on the bench, albeit they were pretty quick to throw them on and give yeah. them a good, good opportunity to get at us. The thing with Glebe was, we've had a good look at them. You know, we, we had that catastrophic um, yeah. turnaround from being 3-0 up to losing 4-3 I watched the video back and it was pretty clear to me what they were trying to do so we set ourselves up to try and stop it and yeah I felt they had quite a bit of the ball but not necessarily in areas where they were hurting us and I think we were quite disciplined 
at doing our job out of possession and we knew how we could potentially hurt them, which to be truthful was, was down wide areas yeah. and, and so it was. We were, but and just bring one of the things you said though, there was you used the squad you could see you used the squad in that game where you had, you know, Harry H Harry and, and JP came on as full backs. And as the game went on, like you said you had no attacking options on on Saturday, Tuesday, there was one point where you had you got Festos, yeah. Alpha and Mo all came on. Yeah. And that was a luxury I guess you've been waiting to have all the time because that was such a positive impact. Yeah, yeah, it makes, on. A, it makes a massive difference. And um it was a game where fresh legs were required because the boys put in a massive shift because, you know, to, to, to stay concentrated and stay disciplined when you're doing that much movement without the ball, it, 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 you know, it's mentally and physically taxing. Yeah. So we needed the fresh legs. We also wanted to offer some threat. I mean, you know, aside from the two that we scored, I personally think we should have definitely had at least one more. Um, you know, I think Trev... Trev probably should have took one of his chances, um, which which he'll accept. So I think with good value, it wasn't like, in my opinion, they might have had a lot of the ball, but I didn't feel it was a smash and no, grab was, in terms of direct chances. It was a comfortable win. I mean, they had the ball, but we managed not to do it because, again, the defence looked better. I mean, I mean Sidji was man in the match yet again. Exactly. You know, but him and Jim are doing really well. The two fullbacks did okay. And I also thought that the midfield defended well. Yeah, they looked after. They, yeah, they looked after it. That, that's what it's all about. You know, man of the match, fair enough. I get why people give it. But from our point of view, if we do our jobs properly, it, 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 it should be the team that benefits yeah. rather than any one individual. You know, Sidge, Sidge can look his best if he's getting protected well by Jim on one exactly. side, JP on the other, Nathan behind. And Leps and exactly, um, Zach in front, you know. You so can see he's done some work on it. Regan can look good if we get the ball to him in dangerous yeah. areas. Trev can be a hero if we get enough balls into the box. So it all kind of interlinks, and um, it'll be interesting because we've got Glebe again in about ten days, yeah. and and that'll be in the league, and and no doubt they'll be they've now had a good look at us as well, and no doubt they'll be well up for um, for for putting that right. So yeah. we'll see how that one goes. But uh, I think the, the Glebe game, it's just like, where's that performance come from? We, why, why wasn't it there Saturday? Because that was a good, solid performance at last. It turned around completely. Mm, I just... And it's like, is it in their heads? Where's it come from? You don't know. To be truthful, I'm not totally sure the answer to that. We're just, we're, we still are a work in progress. You know, we, um, the last three training sessions, we've focused on what we do about the ball. And I definitely think there's evidence that we're starting to improve. Um, we actually had our first social last night, which is ridiculous for me. That aside, you know, previous sides that I've been with, you kind of form those bonds and those friendships during pre-season. Yeah. And we're having to do that in November, which, you know, I'm not saying a social, but do you know what I mean? But I think once people start to bond, that then translates onto the pitch. You know, we've, we've had quite a bit of movement to and from in the squad. We had too many players. Which again was probably an overspill from from the preseason. We almost had to have another preseason, but at competitive, yeah. and, and it took a while for me to shape the squad a little bit. So there has there's been a you know we talk about inconsistency on the pitch, rightly so. There's there's it's still settling down off the pitch. You know we're still trying to find our identity as a group. Still trying to get to know each other. Still trying to get to know what I want us to do. Still trying to get the personnel right. You know, still trying to get all these things like training, equipment, stuff like that, where we want it to be. Yeah, but you can see the guys that are, are, are starting to. It's like, you know, for instance, um, the goal that Billy scored against Glebe, that was get the ball to Regan in the right place, but also Billy knew to make that run. Yeah. So he just was sliding in perfectly tough when the ball came across. Or... I think I said before, Regan in the second half on their, their, their left winger, he just marked him out of the game for 10 minutes and he, where he never left, never left him unless it was going forward. Yeah, I think we know how to get the best out of Regan now, which again took a little while because he, he came in late um, and, 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 I, and I, know, I, know the, I know the fans know him, but a lot of the team not so familiar with him. So it took a little while to work out how to get the best out of him. And also, I think Trev and Bill, their partnership, has, you know, that that's actually hit the floor running pretty well from the start of the season. So 
Regan can put that ball into the box and like I actually spoke to Trevor about this and he, he said it's so good because last season sometimes it felt like he, he this is his words it felt like he was the only one maybe attacking across yeah. whereas now he knows that Bill will make a complimentary run so Regan or Festos or Rory or Mo or Alpha whoever it is putting the ball in has got at least two or three areas yeah. where they can because the thing that was not as on that is when the balls come in it's not just Bill and Trevor the other winger is coming now in the back, yeah. which they weren't. Yeah. You know, other people are getting forward, so it's not just what, like I said, one person. And that's obviously because you must be working on that. To yeah, do that. I mean, it's it's quite basics of football, isn't it? If you're, if you're going to predominantly try and score from wide areas, then the more people you've got in the box, yeah. the more chance. But then it's what happens when it breaks down. We used to get done on the counter attack quite a lot because we probably over picked yeah. it. So yeah, we're still finding the balance, but I don't know. It, it feels like we're making small steps. It'd be nice to make big steps, but it's it's a hard, unforgiving league and you, you've got to fight for everything. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, a day like Saturday, if we're not quite on it and we don't quite get the rubber to green, it's tough. Yeah. Um, one, of the, one of the last things I wanted to say was um, the really good thing about Tuesday night was how Nathan is growing in. in. He's an under-23, he's a young kid, and each game he's improving. And I thought he had his best game. He made... At least three really important either interceptions with his feet or saves. I mean, he's growing really well. Yeah. Um, Naif is someone who started a season not on ability but just on timing and circumstance, was probably the under 23's second choice goalkeeper. Um, and he's had to be patient there because, you know, Tom, Tommy Skill obviously had the gloves. Tom's then gone to Little Common. That's then opened up Naif to be the 23's first team goalie, which he's grabbed with both hands, literally. Um, then we had the situation at Little Common where Glover's got sent off and Naif stepped in and he hasn't looked back and he hasn't put a foot wrong. And yeah, you, you know, the ideal situation for the club long term is that we're able to produce players through Jamie's 23s and Bailey's 23s, who were capable to play in the first team. Now, it was hard because I had a squad of about 26 players. Yeah. We, we were too congested and it didn't really provide opportunity. I've tried to keep some of the boys happy whilst testing them by giving them opportunity at Uckfield. We've actually got one now at Bryden Ropes as well. Um, but we want to keep the good young players under the Tunbridge Wells umbrella and when you look at Tuesday night, and I'm sure it's what the fans want to see, when you look at Tuesday night and you can see Nathan Carter in goal, Johnny Phillips at left back, Harry Hudson at right back, Zach Wolvey at centre midfield. Um, I've got to be very careful when I'm missing anyone when I'm doing my name checking. And, and then, you know, you, you look on the bench, for example, Brad Austin. Brad Austin's doing really well with upfield. I get a I get a VO in him from every upfield game. And I watch it, Cam Wooden's had game time over there, mm -hmm. Jez has had game time over there. And, you know, there's two or three other boys in that under 23s. Ned Lewis trains with us quite frequently. Uh, Jack trains with us quite frequently. Lenny trains with us quite frequently. Um, Cam Wooden obviously trains with us a lot. And, and, and quite rightly, he's had game time with us. So we know who these players are and we want to provide opportunity, but yeah, you know, there's only so many people we can yeah. get. Well, it's it's all it's all positive, but and and only don't positive that takes. Excuse like, me, I just realised I forgot. Max Lambert, Max Lambert is another one knocking on the door, yeah. and again his time will come. So yeah, well he played during pre season. So yeah, yeah, so. and then there's a couple of boys in the 18s who are starting a bench for Jamie. Um, Ollie Ollie um, Thompson is one, and um, oh gosh, there's a centre midfielder. I forgot his name. Which is not very good, is it? Look, the point is, we know, Jamie mm -hmm. and Bailey know, the information comes back. It'd be it'd be fantastic for the fans if one day, you know, there's as many local you're never gonna have a team. Well, it's highly unlikely you'll ever have a team of eleven people from Tunbridge Wells. I mean I'm not from Tunbridge Wells, so I'll have to get my coat if we ever get to that point. But we'll we want we wanna put if we can't be one of the biggest hitters in the league, which realistically we can't in terms of finances, not the moment then if we can produce players that are fit for the first team, well, yeah. it saves us a lot of money and provides a lot of opportunity. And I think fans buy into that 
when they can see lads. I know you guys, you know, I know you, you know how he really? played, played with your son, and I know it just adds that little bit of extra affinity, doesn't it, when you know yeah, someone. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think, well, yeah, I told myself, it's, it's that, it's just having a plan, and I think we start to see there's a plan coming through. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But so our last, the last thing is, is this Linfield game in the, in the Vars, because we all love the Vars, and I, go, I suppose we'll go after Tuesday, I've been quite positive about this one. Look, it's a winnable game, but it's a losable game. They are very similarly positioned to the Little Common. There's a point between them and Little Common. They've got some similar traits to us in that they're quite inconsistent. They score a lot, they let in a lot. Um, so it's probably going to be an exciting game. Yeah, look, playing on a Sunday is a little bit unusual, but there's no reason why that should be an excuse or why it should hamper us. Um, we know you guys will travel, hopefully, in, in, yeah. in your droves as always. And if we can have anything like the support you give us a little common, we can't ask for any more from you then it's just up to us to do our jobs, isn't it? And um, we know you'll want to get through, we all want to get through. No good given right, we've just got to work our socks off and, and, and allow our well, quality to say for us, you know, yeah, we can go there confident, but we beat with stubble, so exactly. it's, not, it's not like it's going to be an easy game by any stretch. No. It's like you say, I think winnable is the right phrase. Yeah, it's just having a bit of perspective, you know, like you, you can't be disrespectful to anyone, um, you know, Anyone saying we should be beating Lordswood, well, do your homework. Look at Lordswood. Look at who they've got playing for them. Look yeah. at the people behind the scenes at Lordswood. You know, you've got no right there. Look at Lingfield before before you take it as an easy game. They've only lost one game at Hawley all season. That was Seven Oaks in the FA Cup, and they only lost that by yeah. a goal. So, look, just, just want a bit of realism. That's not negativity. Yeah. I'm fully confident that if we turn up and give a good account of ourselves, we're more than capable of winning. But we've got no good given right to Yeah. I think it's just gonna struggle up and roll someone over. It's just gonna let's be consistent on Saturday and go for it. On oh, yes. Sunday, sorry. <laughs> consistent on Sunday and just have a crack. Yes, that's all we can hope for. Brilliant. Cheers, Will. Cheers.